Hey guys, it's Jennifer with Roots Redefined. Get your passport ready, because today we are taking you through France and Italy at Disney's 2021 Flower and Garden Festival. It's commonly accepted that French-style gardens were originally inspired by Italian landscape design. A traditional Italian garden features lots of evergreen plants and very few blooming plants or flowers, clipped into precise geometric lines, as well as pergolas with fragrant climbing vines, underplanted herbs like rosemary and lavender, and natural stone features. For most people, a French landscape is also a formal landscape, and therein lies its appeal. Think Versailles, probably the most well-known French garden space. There's a saying that there is a place for everything and everything in its place. French gardens are the neat and tidy students of garden design. The main plan is to create an overall sense of order and control. From there, the ground level does the bulk of the work, creating elaborate parterres or planting beds. These parterres are the most easily recognizable aspect of French garden design. Often in the shape of elegant squares, ovals, circles, or scrolls, these pattern planting beds complement not just the design, but can be seen from the main house or building. They are usually edged with low boxwood or other shrubbery that help to find space and keep edges neat. Symmetry and order are at the heart of French landscape design. The gardens are also meant to be viewed from a distance, so form and design play a major role. They're meant to highlight the centerpiece of the entire space, which would be the house, or in most cases, the chateau. French gardens usually incorporate a cool color palette that emphasizes greens and whites. Think boxwood and stone gravel pathways. Because ornamental flowers were rare in France in the 17th century, the color palette was limited. Trees, bushes, and topiary had to stand out in other ways, so they were trimmed in geometric forms. Producing water features like reflecting ponds, pools, and fountains plays up the geometric patterns as they are often in circular or rectangular shapes. When flowers were incorporated, roses and lavender were common. Gardens are sectioned off by tall hedges and topiaries the way walls define spaces. Topiary is an extension of that control. Often trimmed into ornamental shapes like balls and triangles, man is literally defining the growth and shape of the plant. These are placed in rows along the main axes of the garden and line pathways or border sections. Those pathways are laid out like hallways that flow from one room to the next. The rooms being grove sections, planter beds, or lawns. Now while a formal French garden is something you can recreate at home, I recommend starting with the basics and starting small. Formal design requires far more maintenance than a natural garden. When something is out of place, it's immediately obvious. If you don't want to spend a lot of time keeping your garden in shape, you may want to explore the French country style of garden design. Now in France, we also have the Ratatouille expansion area. This area is not highlighted as a garden destination in the festival passport. However, I definitely think it's worth mentioning. Greeting you at the front are cone-shaped topiaries and white camellia bushes and a bed of pink geraniums. As you move further in, we have boxwood topiary balls and white stone planters full of pink, purple, and white geraniums. You'll notice that white and cream stone is used frequently in this French style garden. Large, elegant stone planters are perfect for a classically styled outside space. Their generous size and attractive ribbon work detail make them a striking focal point for a garden, terrace, or patio. If you look up, you'll find iron window planters full of pink and red flowers. With vintage appeal, it's no surprise that these French-style iron window boxes are popular. They integrate easily into any decor scheme and look beautiful on upper and lower story windows. And if you have a bare wall or an unsightly fence in the yard, you can hang similar planter boxes at multiple levels to create your own living wall. Now we also have a few camellias back here. Camellias are known as the queens of the winter flowers. They are attractive evergreen shrubs prized for their exquisite blooms and compact shapely habit. They bloom continuously from fall to spring when the rest of the garden offers little. Disney's designers and gardeners have a game plan in place so they know exactly what plants they'll need where and when. Once grown in containers or planter boxes can be put together whole and transported by truck to the right site at the right time. They're generally moved at night or early morning and set into place by forklift or crane. That's why one of the nursery shifts start at 5 a.m. and why second shifters can be out planting until 2 a.m. Now it's time to explore our first topiaries, Beauty and the Beast. 
They're a fan favorite, and for good reason. They're a classic and the landscaping is pristine. Keeping with the cool color palette, we have loads of pink delilahs and geraniums mixed in with some deep blue and purple flowers. Spring color is bursting at the seams here and I love it. We also have some elegant red roses behind Beauty and the Beast. And if you make your way back a little further, you'll actually find a mini rose garden on display. I'm a big fan of the light pink Delilahs covering the bed here. The stunning Delilah is a showy bloomer, producing masses of large, deep pink flowers with yellow centers in midsummer, wonderful along borders or in containers. It's a good choice for attracting bees and butterflies to your yard as well, and the flowers are excellent for cutting and putting in a vase. The adored Remy Topiary is back this year as well. We continue to keep with the similar color scheme. Pink Delilahs and purple salvia blanket the bed. It looks like Remy might be holding some herbs, quite possibly lavender, which is popular in the French garden and kitchen. Now the last thing Disney wants is for flowers to turn out to be scraggly, underperforming losers once they're on display for millions of people to see. That's not always easy in Central Florida's hot, humid summers either. To help gravitate toward the best performers, Disney has a backstage All-American Selections trial garden where it tests new varieties in advance. It shares its trial feedback with the Plant Industries AAS program, which gives national awards each year to the best of the newcomers. And now let's explore the regal and manicured gardens of Italy. Art and design exploded during the Italian Renaissance, giving the world the Sistine Chapel, the Mona Lisa, and the Italian garden aesthetic. Aristocrats in the 15th and 16th centuries displayed their wealth and power with majestic villas connected to symmetrical garden rooms that were divided by ivory-covered stone walls, sculpted boxwood hedges, and cypress trees that stretched skyward like arrows. Within each space were hallmarks like romantic pergolas, fountains, mosaics, grottoes, and tranquil reflective pools. Flowers like canna, nasturtium, and sweet-smelling jasmine, which thrive in the hot, dry Mediterranean climate, supplied color. There are two terms to know when it comes to Italian gardens, pergola and bosco. Pergolas, which date back to ancient Roman times, are tunnel-like structures often covered with vining plants like climbing roses or honeysuckle. They were meant to guide visitors and provide shade and coolness. The name bosco comes from the Italian word for wood and describes a grouping of trees often framing decorative structures and statues. Back near the water fountain, we have an elaborate flower arrangement. Pink, peach, and purple geraniums blink at the bottom. As we move our way up, we have yellow snapdragons, purple orb-shaped verbenas, and pink trumpet-shaped flowers. I love how they incorporate foliage plants and perennials with the annuals. It helps to provide a lot of interest and fun texture and height. Now notice how this is really just container gardening. You can recreate this at home on a smaller scale. I think it would even make for a great focal point in the backyard. Now we also have the Italian donkey, surrounded in terracotta pots full of color. Here we have sun patients, blue days, ornamental grass, pink and red geraniums, and a variegated hosta with creamy light pink blooms. Sun patients are great if you love impatience but have a lot of sun in your garden. Sun patients have the same look of classic impatience but are grown with stronger foliage and thicker bloom petals to withstand high heat, sun, and disease. They make a great addition to any summer flower bed. The sun patient leaves may be green, bronze, or purple. Some newer varieties have stunningly variegated foliage that rivals the blooms in color. Now let's head over to our garden destination, Garden Italiano. From fresh spaghetti sauce to your favorite pizza topping, this Tuscan kitchen garden features all of the herbs and produce needed to create a classic Italian feast. Now some of the vegetables and herbs you'll find here include Swiss chard, zucchini, an olive tree, oregano, parsley, and even artichoke, all resting on a beautiful bed of blue daze flowers. I love how these terracotta pots are incorporated everywhere here in Italy. Imprunenta terracotta, the best terracotta in the world, comes from Imprunenta, a small village nestled in the Tuscan hills near Florence. Now a staple for many gardeners, terracotta pots are a natural choice to anchor any plant. Created by firing natural clay at a high temperature, Terracotta means baked earth in Italian. As the clay is fired, the minerals are partially melted, resulting in a hardened but still porous material. 
If you're thinking about creating a similar Italian-inspired garden at home, you should. An edible garden can be just as much of a destination as an ornamental garden. If you're short on backyard space, terracotta pots make beautiful containers for patio or balcony gardens. Start building your Italian-themed garden with backyard staples that fit into the Mediterranean cuisine and aesthetic. Basil, everyone's favorite herb, is a no-brainer when you're curating an Italian-style garden. Tomatoes, especially plum aroma tomatoes, provide vivid color and rich flavor. If you think you love tomatoes but have never had the pleasure of a fresh one from the garden, you're in for a real treat. Sow more plants than you think you'll need. You can never have too many homegrown tomatoes. Less commonly cultivated plants you can add to an Italian-style garden may take some extra work to find, but they'll really set your garden apart from others on the block. These lesser known, but no less delicious, gems of the Italian garden include broccoli rabe and radicchio. To keep in line with the Mediterranean garden style, incorporate some shrubbery like cypress, boxwood, or juniper. And don't forget flowers. Who says a vegetable garden can't be colorful? In this garden, Disney has added yellow daisies with some smaller purple and blue flowers. Marigolds do very well as companions for many herbs and vegetables as well. For a touch of Tuscany in your own yard, create small defined spaces, your rooms, using manicured shrubs like boxwood, or plant a terracotta pot with a lemon tree. Plant it in a classic rolled rim terracotta pot for a simple yet statement making look. And homegrown citrus isn't a luxury reserved for gardeners with large backyards or in sunny tropical zones. You can grow citrus trees indoors in containers and enjoy their fragrance and zesty fruit even in apartments or in wintry northern homes. While standard citrus trees grow too big for indoors, dwarf varieties are their perfect companion inside. They are grafted onto special roots that limit their size and speed up fruiting. If you're new to growing citrus, start with dwarf types known to flourish and fruit well indoors. Easy to grow favorites such as improved Meyer lemon fit the bill. We also have the lovely lady in the tramp topiary. I love the ornamental grass used as lady's ears and the hair around her head. Lady and the Tramp are sitting on a bed of asparagus fern and pink and red geraniums. There is also a really neat vertical tower of red geraniums behind them, which is covered by Boston ferns at the base. Geraniums are easy to maintain and make popular bedding plants in the garden, but they're also commonly grown indoors or outside in hanging baskets. And funny enough, the asparagus fern is actually not a fern. It's a bushy, evergreen twining vine with wiry, spiny, scrambling, or climbing stems that typically grow 10 to 20 feet long. It features feathery, fern-like flattened sprays of bright green stems. Not too far from the Lady in the Tramp topiaries, we have more terracotta pots full of foliage plants such as the sweet potato vine mixed with flowering plants. They have also added some beautifully sculpted juniper pom-pom topiaries in the center. I'm a big fan of the sweet potato vine, one of the most versatile plants around. You can grow sweet potato vine in sun or shade and in container gardens, landscapes, or garden beds and borders. The plant is loved for its colorful chartreuse, purple, bronze, copper, or black foliage. It's also perfect as a spiller in the thriller filler spiller container gardening technique. Now if you enjoyed this video, you might want to check out the English style garden in my United Kingdom flower and garden video. So that's all we have for you today. Thanks so much for stopping by and watching. This is Jennifer with Roots Redefined. I'll see you again real soon.